Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz, your host here at Crimes Untold. Uh, apologies, I missed a few days of vlogmas. I am dealing with a little bit of personal shit right now, health stuff, all of the above. So today we're actually going to be talking about the most beautiful suicide known to man. You'll understand, or if you know about this, we're talking about the death of Evelyn McHale. So Evelyn Frances McHale's death is one that is known as the most beautiful suicide. Her death has the moniker due to a photo that Robert Wiles took of her lifeless body on top of a crushed vehicle. So this man, Robert Wiles, or Wiles, was a photography student who just simply took a picture of that moment. Little did he know it would become known as the most beautifully aesthetic picture and it would become overly circulated through magazines, like popular magazines and other media sources. It would be in Time Magazine, and this is where it was dubbed as the most beautiful suicide. But who was Evelyn McHale? So she was a bookkeeper for the U.S. Army Corps in the 40s. She grew up in Berkeley, California, and was one of nine children born to her parents. In the 1930s, her father moved to Washington, D.C., but... This is also, unfortunately, when the family would fall apart. Her mother would have a mental breakdown due to her depression, which would later be determined as bipolar disorder that went untreated and undiagnosed for a very long time. So they divorced. Her father and would end up retaining custody of all the children, which is something really bizarre for me to see and read about because something similar happened with my family and that father figure was not allowed to have his children. So kind of weird. But anywho, Evelyn would end up joining the Women's Army Corps after she graduated from high school. And with the Army Corps is where she would end up moving to multiple different places such as Missouri and to New York. So in New York is where she would end up working for a company called the Kitab Engraving Company. And while she was working there, she would meet who would become her fiance, which is a man named Barry Rhodes. So Barry Rhodes actually left the Air Force. In context, it says Army Air Force, and he was a college student. Evelyn would end up having a long distance relationship with him because of where he was living at the time. So one day she would end up like going to spend time with her fiance. And this was on April 30th of 1947. And he knew nothing about any issues that she had when it came to her mental health. And I believe it was in Pennsylvania where she was going to visit him. I might be mistaken if it's correct or if it's not correct, I'll put something on the screen. So he knew nothing about any of her issues. And Eventually, she would go back to New York City and she would visit the Empire State Building. She then would proceed to jump off the 86th floor observatory and land on a car that was parked below. So there was a guard standing just feet from her. This guard was 10 feet from her exactly. And guard didn't think anything of it, just seemed like a normal person. And when this guard turned, this is when she jumped she would die from suicide on May 1st of 1947 at just 23 years old. Her body was intact, which is weird for how hard she landed on the parked limousine down below. So it's odd and strange and peculiar and really cool how perfect her body landed. In her black purse, they would find a suicide note on her remains. And there was also personal effects found on the observation deck. So the stuff on the observation deck, they, they would end up finding a note that said, he is much better off without me. I wouldn't make a good wife for anybody. The note that's found in the purse, however, is discovered from Frank Murray, who is a detective on the scene. This note states, I don't want anyone in or out of my family to see any part of me. Could you destroy my body by cremation? I beg of you and my family, don't have any service for me or rem remembrance of me. My fiancé asked me to marry him in June. I don't think I could make a good wife for anybody. He is much better without me. Tell my father I have too many of my mother's tendencies. So unfortunately, her sister Helen would have to identify her. She would be cremated for her wishes, and, and she didn't have a service, and she didn't have a memorial. This was her wishes. And she was cremated at Fresh Pond Crematory in Queens, and then her ashes were given back to her family. So Evelyn will forever be known as having the most beautiful and elegant picture taken ever that has coincidentally 
but that coincidentally was taken four minutes after her death. This photo would run, like I mentioned, in Life magazine, um, and it would run on May 12th of 1947, so just 11 days after her death. This picture itself is haunting due to how beautiful she looks. She does look as if she's either resting or napping instead of her being actually dead. Uh, the photo has also been praised as being one of the most iconic photos of suicide ever to have been taken. So that, my friends, is the suicide of Evelyn McHale. Uh, it's a very, it's a very different installment for Vlogmas. The video that's going to come up next is actually about a recent identification. There's actually two recent identifications that I want to talk about that are very, very notable. We're going to be talking about an identification of a Gary Ridgway person. Yeah, and then we'll go from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys tomorrow in another video. Bye guys.